Let's go deeper. Because what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to spend a lot of time with the graphing, but I want you guys to make sure you have this written down so you guys can see exactly what uh, we're dealing with. So, so far, what we've talked about is we looked at the graph y equals b to the x. And the one thing we found out about that was that we knew we had a point here at 1, comma, or 0, comma 1. We knew we had that point because it doesn't, we know that whenever we put 0 in for x, we're always going to have 1, right? The base could always change, but it doesn't matter what the base is. Whenever you put 0 in for x, you're always going to have a coordinate point of 0, comma 1. Then this exponential graph looks something like this, right? And when we talked about the domain and range, we found out the domain of this problem is all real numbers, right? It infinitely goes to the left and infinitely goes to the right. However, the range of this problem was all numbers have to be greater than 0, though, correct? Right? Remember talking about that? Yes? No? Yeah, yeah. OK. So now, if you guys remember, so this was y equals b to the x. Then I used inverses, right? Do you guys remember I used inverses to show you the, the, the logarithmic function? So if here's y to the x, I use inverses. I swap the x and the y, right? And I said x equals b to the y. And I said, how do you solve for y? And I said, well, we solve for y by using our logarithmic function, which says y equals log base b of x. All right? Okay. Now I want to show you what this inverse graph looks like. So obviously, if I want to remind you guys, if we have a graph and I say find the inverse, we can reflex it over the y equals x line. Okay, So remember, when you take a line and you're finding the inverse of it, what are you doing with the coordinate points? You're swapping them, right? Just like you swap your variables, you swap the coordinate points. So if I had a coordinate point at 0, 1, my inverse graph for logarithmic function, where do you think I'm going to have a point? 1, 0. So if you guys kind of think about this, all you're going to do is take this graph and flip it over. So we're going to have 1, 0. And now, if you guys want to find the logarithm graph, it's going to look exactly like this, where it's going to have a coordinate, it's going to have an x-intercept at 1, 0. Now, let's go and look at the domain. All I did was I took this graph and I pretty much reflected it over the x, y line. So when you take this graph and reflect it over, you're going to formulate, you're going to form this graph. All right? Now, let's go and look at the domain range. This domain we said had all real numbers, right? Does this graph have, does this graph include all of the x values, possible x values? All the positive ones, right? But does it ever get to 0 or any negative number? No. So the domain for this one is all numbers that are greater than 0, all positive values. So it wouldn't be 1 to infinity. It wouldn't be 1 to infinity because what about 0.9? Right? I mean 0. Or, well, but it doesn't include 0. So it's just going to be all positive real numbers. Or sorry, just all positive, yeah, real numbers. All right? Then let's look at the range. So when we're looking at the range, here, our range only included Destin from, z from above 0. Okay, So here our range, if you guys notice, is going to include all of your values. This, even though it looks like it's tapering off, is going to keep on getting incrementally larger. So the range for this one is going to be from negative infinity to infinity, or all real numbers for the range. All right. So write down what that uh, graph looks like so you guys can understand it. Because now I just want to go through quickly.